we go through a comparison of a SEMA My and Scrum. And the agenda I have for that is to, to, to begin with, just to find Scrum uh, like one slide uh, for people that are unfamiliar with Scrum, and also to clarify the Agile principles, because Scrum is just one methodology that is based upon some Agile principles. And then for people unfamiliar with SEMA My, I have just a couple of slides on SEMA My. And then I'll discuss the, the differences and uh, similarities at a very high level to begin with. And then I'm going to go through the bulk of the meeting on a detailed mapping. And the reason I did this is because in the last few years, probably six or seven years, I've seen people either declare that CMMI is or is not uh, compatible with Scrum, uh, but they had no basis for the argument. They, they may have heard about a story or a particular scenario, a situation that occurred, uh, which led them to believe it either was or was not going to be compatible. Uh, but there was no detail behind their analysis. Even sometimes they had not either read CMMI or Scrum uh, to make the analysis with. So what I've done here is to do a, a kind of a line-by-line -line comparison um, to kind of show that if you did Scrum, you know, what practices would you be meeting in CMMI and uh, what practices are kind of remaining and how do they kind of fit together uh, from a, a practice standpoint and a kind of a theory or philosophy standpoint, the approach of how to do uh, software. And then I'll discuss the other components of Level 2, because not everything in Scrum is uh, covered uh, into Level 2. And then uh, I'll discuss Level 3 uh, process areas too, and then a brief summary at the end. Uh, there's a web um, path name at the very bottom of the slide on six, slide 6. Uh, there is an article on this comparison, uh, should you want to kind of read a short 700-word uh, article that kind of shows the comparison again uh, with some other narration uh, that is there on that web page. Now, my first uh, slide, uh, slide seven here, is a, a quick definition of Scrum for people that are unfamiliar. And uh, it starts on the far, far left and uh, with a, a name called the product backlog, and that really is a requirements list. So if you had requirements, uh, which they typically call user stories in the Scrum or an Agile world, uh, they are like typically one-line uh, sentences that describe from an end-user perspective uh, what the system should do. So for example, as an end-user, I would like to be able to access this data in this format, or as an end-user, I would like to be able to uh, print this report in that particular sequence. So if you broke down the functionality of a system, into user-centric or user perspectives, and you made a single line item out of that particular requirement, uh, you're building up a, a, what do they call a product backlog. And the word backlog means work we have not reached yet. So at the very beginning, nothing is being started, so everything is on the, the product backlog. And now in some Scrum definitions, they refer to that being a, a reminder or a placeholder uh, for the team to go talk to the end user and clarify the details behind that one line uh, sentence. In other Scrum implementations, they may have more definitions uh, you can then access to understand some of the details behind the requirement. But from a, a fairly standard standpoint, uh, the product backlog is a list, typically in Excel or a Word document, uh, or maybe even a, a three by five cards that kind of shows the uh, one line requirements uh, that the team plans to uh, look at and then plans to build. Uh, release planning and sprint planning kind of go together. Uh, when they have the, uh, the backlog of requirements uh, or user stories, they typically assign a point number, like how big it is, or waiting uh, to that requirement to kind of indicate uh, the complexity or effort required to do it. So they call this story points, and the story point, if I had uh, 10 requirements in a list, and I give one of the requirements the number 15, and another requirement the number one uh, story point, then I'm saying that this requirement with the 15 story points is 15 times bigger or more complex to do than the one with a uh, number one being assigned. So by assigning some story point numbers to each of the requirements, you have a rough idea of how much work there is to do on the project, and the total number of, uh, total account of all the story points is basically the total workload and points for the whole backlog of requirements. And that allows the team to start to do release planning, uh, which is to determine what features or what requirements can fit into a release, which ones kind of go together, and which ones may be uh, less a priority and can stay in the backlog and not go into the first or second release. 
And then sprint planning is the more detailed planning for the upcoming sprint. And a sprint is typically uh, two to four weeks. I have seen sprints of one week. Uh, but whatever duration you pick out for the sprint, you typically stick with uh, so you can get the team into a level of momentum and get into a cycle of doing maybe four-week or two-week increments. So sprint planning is taking the requirements that will fit into that sprint uh, based upon how big they are and how much work there is, <clears throat> and then looking at the effort estimates uh, required to do the work, and then deriving a task list, uh, typically called a sprint backlog, a task list of uh, tasks required to finish out uh, that particular set of requirements. So I put some example uh, steps in there, but uh, the team would then you know, uh, maybe break these out into more specific uh, tasks, uh, for example, analysis, design, code test. Uh, so when the work has been done for that sprint, uh, let's suppose it's a four-week sprint, uh, there's a sprint review, and that's where the team demonstrates back to the uh, the product owner or the person that owns the uh, backlog and maybe the customer too. Uh, they demonstrate what they've done and they kind of show that it's that particular piece has been complete. So there's a level of uh, kind of a review or accountability at the end uh, to kind of verify what they've built is actually what they ha the customer kind of had in mind. And then the sprint retrospective is the lessons learned where the team looks back at the last sprint and they determine kind of what went well, uh, what didn't go so well, and any corrective actions they could take to improve how they're doing uh, the Scrum activities. And so the next sprint starts up uh, the next day uh, after the four-week four sprint. Uh, there's a review of the backlog because that may have changed. Requirements may have been added or deleted or modified or the priority modified on the backlog. They get into the for a sprint planning activity again, and they refine the activities and tasks required uh, for that next sprint. And you can see on every sprint uh, at the end, uh, there's a potentially deliverable uh, green arrow. The, the, the uh, functionality they build may not, be, may not make any sense to actually deliver uh, because it may be too small and need other functionality to go with it. Uh, but it is potentially deliverable, uh, which means it works by itself, uh, but may be waiting for other functionality to be built uh, to go as a release. Uh, so the idea is that you could actually deliver that piece of code um, if it were to be standalone, and if you build up enough components over the sprints, uh, then you can do a release. So you can see that the uh, Scrum lifecycle uh, basically defines these standard steps you go through uh, to plan, manage, and track, and demonstrate uh, the work, and breaks it up into these small increments, uh, typically two to four weeks, uh, so the team gets feedback on their work. Now, Scrum is a, an example of the Agile principles there are other methodologies out there uh, that also meet the Agile principles. And on this diagram on slide eight, I've listed actually in slide eight and nine uh, the Agile principles. And on the left-hand side, I've put a little marker uh, for whether I think it's CMMI compatible. So is this Agile principle either against or for or with uh, CMMI as a kind of philosophy? So the first principle, is early and continuous delivery of valuable software. That's what agilists would uh, want to kind of strive towards. Uh, and I think that's a good thing, and I think it's very compatible with CMMI. Uh, welcome changing requirements, even late in development. So both, both groups have the ability to handle change. In the Scrum world, they have the backlog, which is then uh, modified uh, kind of uh, between sprints, or well, modified during a sprint, but not looked at until the next sprint kind of starts back up. And in CMMI, we have uh, requirements management um, and project planning uh, that look at requirements changes. So I think both, both teams are best are set up to handle changes. They may not all like the change, particularly late. I think they'll be even in terms of how much they would like the change uh, late in, in the game. Uh, deliver working software frequently. So in the Scrum world,